lovely people. Welcome or welcome back to another Story Study Saturday. I'm Sammy and I'm a writer who likes to learn about writing through reading and share what I learn with you. This week is a little bit different because I definitely did not plan to make a video on this book, but I just really enjoyed it so much that I was like, I can definitely analyze this book the way that I read it for sure. This week I am talking about Thank You For Listening by Julia Whalen, which I listened to, shockingly enough. Normally I would not do a video on a book that I didn't read with my eyes because I feel like I get less from reading with my ears than I do with my eyes in terms of understanding and learning from the writing. I definitely get a lot from the story, but this was a book that I was absolutely never going to read with my eyes. Julia Whalen is a audiobook narrator and she reads audiobooks for a living. This is her second book, I believe, and there's not a world in which I would have read a book by a woman who narrates audiobooks about a woman who narrates audiobooks with my eyes instead of listening to it. There's not a world that that would have happened. So I think that the person who wrote the story and the platform in which that I consumed the story creates a new version of the story than what would have happened had I read it with my eyes, if that makes any sense. So if you would like a quick summary of Thank You For Listening, Sawani is an audiobook narrator, not the career she would have picked out for herself, but after an incident left her with only one eye, her acting career hit the ground with no momentum to get back up. Thankfully, she set herself free from the entry-level romance narrating. That is, until an author she worked with regularly passes away and leaves her with the project of a lifetime for her and the romance world's most beloved male narrator to co-narrate it. She is juggling a beloved grandmother with dementia, a best friend on the verge of success that Swanee was expected to have too, all on top of navigating a mystery man. So let's get into my thoughts on this one. I adored this book so much. It felt like it was written to be both a great story and a well-told story as well as a playground for Julia as she was recording it. Like I said, there was no world that I would have read this instead of listened to it. There is a world where someday when I have more bookshelf space, it is on my bookshelf because I adored it. But my first consumption of this book had to have been through the audio format and I'm so glad so glad that it was. The conflicts that Swan is navigating are all very personal to her while still being relatable to other people, mainly myself as I'm the only one who understands my understanding of a reading of it. The way that she views herself and the world around her and how she views herself through the eyes of the world around her are very genuine. They feel very genuine and real and supported by how she behaves and how she acts and all of her history and and what we know about her backstory, as we get more of her backstory, it starts to make even more sense. All of that conflict that she's going through feels practical for what her life is. It's not over dramatized or like glanced over in any way. It's like the Goldilocks of the level of conflict. The men in this story are very interesting because they are very clearly a man written by a woman, but in a way that it's like the way that they grew up, they had to grow up into a man written by a woman because of the women that were in their lives and how their lives are influenced by those women and the jobs that they do and the way that they interact with the world. They know enough about like women in the book to behave in a way that a man written by a woman behaves in real life. Like if a real man came up to me with the backstory that this guy has and I was like, oh my gosh, you're literally, I would not question him being a man written by a woman. In real life, I would be like, oh my gosh, you're, you're a guy that's written by a woman. This is perfect, you're great. This is all women want in the world is men written by women. You're great, you know? Like the way that he became what he is is believable and it's not like, oh, I am a fictional character kind of thing. This is filled with so many different forms of love. There's like familial love, there's friend love, there's like romantic love, and this is Obviously, it's a romance story. It's everything about it is, is a romance story, but there is the love that Swan has for her grandmother, the love that she has for her mother, the love between her mother and her stepdad, I guess. The way that everybody shows love differently. There's the love between Swan's dad and his mother, the grandmother, that is shown in a very different light than all of the other love that we see, and that's kind of part of the conflict that you see there. There's the love between Adaku, 
the actor friend that's getting success, who's Swan's best friend, who's there to support her, even though they're in vastly different places of their lives. There's the romantic love, there's self-love that's being learned. There's so many different forms of love that this book is beautiful, incredibly well done. All of the side characters, because of all of that love, they're very fleshed out. They're very detailed. They're, they feel like real people and they are making a visible impact on Swan as she is going through the story and overcoming all of her challenges. And that's done so well. And I believe that all of these characters have their own lives. None of them are just there to make an impact on Swan and it's great honestly. A personal preference thing. This book has like a lot, a lot of sexual vocabulary and it's used to be funny because they are erotica book narrators basically in this story but at the same time it's like a tasteful fade to black story with the actual characters which makes this really unique balance of this is the world that they work in but we're not engaging in it in their actual story. So you get to interact with that, like they think it's funny that they're reading erotica, but there's no like written erotica in the story, you know? So it's this unique like separation of two different worlds that are a part of their world. And I think it was done really well in a way that I didn't actually notice until afterwards when I was writing out my thoughts and I was like, what else was good about this book? And I was like, oh, that's so crazy. I definitely noticed all of the like innuendos and the, like the sex jokes and all of the times that they were reading from the actual book that they were reading that they were narrating that I was like oh okay but like the actual moments of intimacy were intimate for the characters it wasn't like here you go you know the way that the book that they were reading in the book was it was a, it was a very nice disconnect I will say outside of the storytelling of this the performance of the audiobook was amazing because there were moments where you could interact with the narrator Julia Whalen narrating other characters and then you also had Swan narrating other characters or Swan doing an accent that another character that Julia had narrated did but you could tell the difference between a different character or Swan doing an accent which is so fascinating to me because there was literally a moment where she was like I'm gonna adopt that girl's accent and it's the same accent but it sounds like it's coming from a different person and I am flabbergasted by the talent that it must have taken to do that where you can hear that it's the same person with an accent absolutely amazed so incredible definitely worth listening to what do I think could be improved about this story there were a lot of relationships there were a lot of relationships and a lot of them were very important. I feel like we didn't get enough of those relationships because they were all so great, but at the same time, there were a lot of relationships. Like there, there was this weird balance where I wanted more of the relationships, but at the same time, I wanted less relationships total because it was a lot to keep track of or a longer story where we would have more space to spend with each of those relationships because all of them were very important to Swan's story and Swan overcoming what she needed to overcome in this particular section of her life. Another thing that I think could be improved similarly, just giving the story more space, the ending felt really rushed to me and I definitely think there was a lot of room for impact and like spending those moments with Swan and seeing how she deals with that situation, being vague on purpose for avoiding spoilers. But there's just like a lot of things that happened in that last chapter and I just wish that there was a little bit more breathing room between each of those events in that last chapter. So maybe instead of being one last chapter, there were like three chapters at the end, just so there was enough space to actually be in that moment. So what can writers learn from this story? Writing what you know does not mean writing your exact story. And this is a really, really special example of this because Julia Whalen reads books for a living. She's an audiobook narrator for a living. She has wrote this book about an audiobook narrator who does it for a living, who has a grandparent that has dementia. Julia had a grandparent that had dementia. She got to experience these things. The people in her story are not the people who are in her life. She is not Swan. Swan's life is totally different than hers. There is so much that is coming from a place of knowing what it's like, but not telling your own story. 
Swan is not a self-insert of Julia. Julia loves being an audiobook narrator. Swan is stuck doing it. That's a totally different perspective than Julia's perspective. Her acknowledgement section where she talks about the process, or wrote, I guess, if you read it with your eyes instead of your ears, about the process of writing the story and how people that she knew were like, am I in this story? Am I in this? No, it's not a real life story. I'm not putting real people into it. It's fiction. You don't have to self-insert to insert yourself, you know? You don't have to be the character to influence how the character lives their lives and the understanding of what the character's life is. This book is also a really interesting example of how you can use cliches and turn them and flip them and switch them into something that is unique and special to your story individually, because this is this has so many cliches in it. It has all of the cliches that I could possibly think would be in this book. All of them are in it, but none of them are in it in the way that I would have guessed they would be in it. And that's amazing, which creates a really unique experience where you know what to expect, but you don't know what to expect because it's done in a way that you would not expect. It's a ve it's very great at that. And I think the last thing that I would say you can learn from this book is that you can get better at writing through reading. Julia Wayland reads books for a living, and this book absolutely demolished my expectations. It was so good, so good. And I, I'm 70% sure this is only her second book. It's very confusing because when you go on to Goodreads, it says every book that she narrated is a book that she's done. So it's harder to find the ones that are just her. But I'm pretty sure based off of the acknowledgement section that it's her second book and her first book was called My Oxford Year. But it's so well done. And I am genuinely impressed by how much great came out of it. And I think that does have a lot to do with having been somebody who reads books for a living. Honestly, goals, but I can't do enough character voices to be, or accents to do that. This is my second five-star book of the year. So I definitely recommend you either go out and read it or get an audiobook copy because it's magical of an experience. It's like a whole, it's a one woman show in audiobook form and it's done really, really well. I highly recommend it. But that is all that I've got for you today. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. It'll really help me out. Have you heard of Thank You For Listening? Because the first time I heard about it was when I think it was about to be published. Like you could sign up for pre-orders. I saw it on Taylor Jenkins Reid's Instagram account because Julia Whalen does the audiobooks of her books and she was trying to support her. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'll have to check that out. And now here we are blown away. I literally cannot not recommend it. If this is the first time you're hearing about it, let me know in the comments. If you've heard about it before, go read it. Go read it. This is your sign to get an audiobook copy from your library or Audible or wherever you get your audiobooks. I think Scribd also has audiobooks. I don't know, man. I get them from the library. I was on the wait list for it for like a month. Definitely go put yourself on hold for this book. I highly recommend it. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop right now. If you don't wanna miss any of my uploads, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell next to it. And I will see you guys on Tuesday for a Writing Tip Tuesday and back again on Saturday for another story study video.